but uh, when they were not heard for about three to five minutes, the female officer called out for them. And no response, she immediately opened the door and discovered that the um, window was open and they had escaped from there. Department of Youth Affairs Director Peter Alexis Atta says the officer chased after the two 16-year-olds towards the Manilao baseball field, where they were last spotted. Four officers have been searching all day Monday, but the girls still nowhere to be found. The minors are status offenders, initially facing no criminal charges. Officials only could say that they were being held for either skipping school or being beyond control. Ada says that's why the window at the cottage home is left unsecured. These are kids that are outside. They, If you notice, they're not even fenced in. Their windows are not even locked. Their doors are not locked. Uh, they're given a, a home environment. I have a funny feeling, Carmen, that they planned this. On the run since Friday, it was here where it happened. Two 16-year-old girls jumped out of the window and walked out. Officials say they are hopeful they will find these girls and bring them home. Whoever is harboring these girls, uh, they better think this over because uh, the consequences is going to be much greater. If they are listening right now to the to this uh, interview, uh, uh, girls, I would really recommend uh, just give us a call. We don't want you out on the streets. The streets are dangerous. Okay, uh, you might be you think you're safe, but you never know who else is on the other side. Since their escape, only one client remains at the cottage home. Ada says they are aware the girls have made contact with at least one individual. One teen is described as being Chamorro with brown eyes, brown and black hair, a scar on her right thigh, and pierced earlobes. The other is described as Chuki's Chamorro with brown hair, brown eyes, and cut marks on her left hand. Anyone who spots the pair is asked to call DYA at 735-5022. We're Guam Crime Stoppers at 477-4357. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Carmen Victoria Turlaki. A number of defendants implicated in a scheme to smuggle contraband into the prison want their case thrown out or severed. Former head of DEPCOR Internal Affairs Jeff Limo argues the government failed to present any evidence to grand jurors to support the indictment against him. Limo, as we've reported, is accused of receiving bribes and transferring inmate Sean Paul Johnson from one area of the prison to another. Defense argues prosecutors had in their possession the text messages exchanged between Limo and co-defendant Ronald Menno. These messages suggest Limo didn't know what was happening. DOC officer Frankie Roslin also wants his case thrown out because there's not enough evidence to prov prove he was involved in the conspiracy. A total of 13 individuals, both inmates and DOC staff, were charged in this case, some of whom have already pled out and agreed to cooperate with authorities. A return hearing is set for September 6th. A Catholic school teacher charged with molesting a 10-year-old student will head to trial later this month. Peregrine St. Nicholas appeared in court on Monday morning. The Bishop of Gardner Memorial School physical education teacher has been under house arrest since the allegations were made against him last year. If convicted, he faces 15 years to life behind bars. Trial is set for July 25th. Didn't get the packages you were waiting for in the mail? Well, two cases of mail theft were recently unsealed in the District Court of Guam. Glenn Doria Perez and Ryan Cole Christian Duenas both entered plea deals and face up to five years in jail. Perez's court documents state work as, works as a ramp agent. Duenas works as a cargo agent. Both were charged for stealing items including laptop computers, Apple Watches, and a PlayStation gaming system. Both will be sentenced on October 4th. A man tasked with leading the very agency that protects what comes into our borders is in the hot seat. The current head of Guam Customs, who has been scrutinized based on his qualifications to do the job, is defending his role. Tonight, he goes before lawmakers. Kiani Mandiola joins us from, the, from Hagatnya with more. Kiani? The confirmation hearing is underway. Eric Palasha is sitting before senators in a hearing the community already expected to be controversial. We caught up with Palasha's earlier today. His leadership in question. The acting director of the Guang Customs appearing for his confirmation hearing to determine whether he will remain the man in charge. 
Palacios was appointed two months back to lead the agency, causing uproar over his qualifications. I do have plant protection and quarantine experience as well um, from early in my working career. Palash is trying to prove the naysayers wrong. Just on Friday, I responded in the affirmative to the Department of Administration to proceed with providing us with a, a certified list of candidates mm -hmm. for 29 mm -hmm. recruits. Recruits, he says, would replace the 35 officers lost in the years that followed findings of corruption within the agency. Palash is even touting renewed agreements with sister agencies in the CNMI and federal agencies like ATF and the U.S. Postal Inspection Service. We just memorialized our understanding of wanting to help each other, wanting to share resources, um, share intel uh, reports that, uh, that we get and that they get, and seeing where um, we can bridge our collective enforcement efforts. And he says his work is far from over. I'm going to make it my priority um, to finally get the officers uh, hazardous duty pay because they deserve it. Um, is going to be is going to remain my priority to work on on promotions that are, are lo that have been long standing well deserved promotions for both uniform and civilians uh, it's going to remain my priority um, to hire more personnel both uniform and civilians issues that if rectified he says could ultimately better improve the protection of borders and interception of drugs when we don't provide those opportunities uh, the government is really uh, doing them an injustice. Though the outcome from Monday's hearing rests in the hands of lawmakers, Palacios is confident and ready to continue leading the agency. Through the end of the administration, absolutely. I would love to. We've begun so many different projects, and I'd like to see a lot of them through mm -hmm. or continue to push them forward. Beyond the current administration, if the opportunity presented itself to come back to customs, I would do it in a heartbeat. We will follow tonight's hearing and bring you more on KOAM.com and on Primetime Tuesday. Back to you. Thanks, Keani. On D18 tonight, we have three more senatorial candidates taking the hot seat. They are Republican candidates James Moylan and Javier Atlick, along with Democrat candidate Ned Pablo. D18 tonight is completely interactive, so... Put your questions in the comment section of our Facebook live stream and we'll work to get them on the air. D18 Tonight is coming up right after prime time. More news in a moment. There are more ways to experience KUAM news than any other source on Guam. Download the KUAM news app for your Apple or Android device for 24-7 news, sports, videos, weather, streaming with KUAM radio, and important news alerts. And stay connected at home with Guam's first app for Apple TV. All available now from the App Store. A simple handshake. That's all Jake Calvo needed when he started his company. Today, 80 years later, we like to say thank you to all of you who have taken our hand in trust. Thank you to the dreamers. Thank you to the realists. Thank you to the family-oriented. Thank you to the entrepreneurial. Thank you to those climbing the corporate ladder. And to the ones starting a new life together. Thank you to the traditionalists and the edgy. To the young at heart and the old souls. Thank you to the daring, to the protective, to the practical. Thank you to the hopeful, to all of you from all of us, our deepest, happiest, and infinite thanks. 80 years here for you. 80 years thanks to you. Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust. On my last day at the court, I was presented this jar of post-its. During the presentation, they told me, they said, Josh, we asked every single employee to write down a word that best describes you. They must really believe it's an important thing that they need to share with me. So it's quite humbling when you see, you know, what people think of you. Professional, leadership, visionary, articulate, dedicated, admirable, caring. It meant to me that people that worked for me were very happy with my leadership. They were very thankful for my leadership and they were impacted by my leadership. 
I want to serve as a lieutenant governor because the skill sets, my experiences, and my energy, and this is an opportunity for me to help push a vision. That's the reason why I'm willing to take a risk and run for office. I'm Lilian Guerrero and I approve this message. There are more ways to experience Guam via KUAM News, giving you what you want, when you want, and how you want it. From smart devices, Alexa, what's in the news? Here's your flash briefing. Over the web, on mobile, on streaming platforms, with immersive, interactive formats, and via social media where it's more than just content, it's conversation. More ways to keep you informed and entertained whenever you want it, wherever you are, on whatever device you're using. The GMH board is actively engaged in trying to maintain the hospital's inclusion in the Medicaid and Medicare programs. In a recent meeting, members got an update on the deficiencies cited in the latest CMS inspection report. The board also tasked its various subcommittees with reviewing corrective action plan items within their respective oversight. GMH has until October 1st to resolve the issues to the satisfaction of CMS or risk removal from the federal health care programs. Also at the meeting, hospital administrator and CEO Peter John Camacho briefed the board on the governor's bill to prioritize GMH we would spending. First need to use any of those monies that would um, be required to correct Joint Commission and CMS deficiencies before we could do other things like capital improvement projects, um, operational needs, uh, or even uh, putting aside reserves. So that was. We spent a lot of time uh, at the legislature this this past month. The governor's measure became moot through moot though when lawmakers repealed the sales tax that would have provided new funding. Now GMH is asking for an alternate revenue source to address its chronic budget shortfall, currently pegged at thirty million dollars a year. The Philippine consulate in Guam says it's deeply concerned by reports that Filipino authorities have detained a cruise ship bound for Yap on human trafficking charges. The vessel was supposed to provide extra room accommodations for this weekend's Micronesia Games, but a tip led to the discovery of 139 undocumented workers who claimed they were offered jobs in Yap. Nestor Laconso reports. It was a 146-room cruise ship, the Forever Lucky, that was supposed to head to Yap, but the Philippine Coast Guard intercepted the vessel and discovered the passengers on board lacked the required documentation. Philippine Vice Counsel Alex Valespin. The enforcement agencies uh, in the Philippines are conducting the human trafficking uh, case or angle for this because definitely undocumented, you will bring them uh, to a, a foreign place to work. That's... Uh, basically human trafficking. He commends the Philippine Coast Guard and FBI and says the consulate was aware that a cruise vessel might be providing accommodations during the games, but they did not know there were people on board who were reportedly recruited to work as tattoo artists, massage therapists, and even pig roasters. Valespin says they were never authorized. All those will be authenticated by the Foreign Service Post uh, which has jurisdiction over the place of destination. In this case, YAP is under our uh, jurisdiction, and since there is no uh, Philippine Overseas Labor uh, Office here, it's the consulate which uh, does the authentication. Overseas Filipino workers are the backbone of the country's economy. The government has become very strict about foreign recruitment and created the powerful Philippine Overseas Employment Administration, which is charged with protecting OFWs. Filipinos uh, without a recruitment agency, they're on their own and they can be subject to abuses. So uh, 
uh, we would like and the Philippine government would like to prevent those uh, ha- from happening. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Lacanto. And back here, here at home, Liberation Festivities could be off to a festive start. Setting up in Guam's capital, this year's Liberation Festival will have nearly 30 vendors. They'll have games for kids, caricature drawing, body art rides, and lots and lots of food. The festival opens this Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. in Paseo and will be open nightly until July 22nd. Students, aspiring entrepreneurs, and community members gathered for the first ever Inspire Guam conference held at the Hilton. Founded by Victor Cavo of Invictus Consulting, the conference is meant to inspire Guam's younger generations to engage in new ways of digit- digitalization, promote entrepreneurial skills, and build community relationships. Topics such as learning how to start a business from creative business and legal aspects, as well as encouraging attendees to utilize new products and services regardless of popularity, were discussed. The event included numerous guest speakers from the Guam Visitors Bureau, local, local business owners, and media influencers. Sports is next, but first, here's your island weather. Every day a plus. We're celebrating our 135th anniversary today, both in the outlying regions on which we hub and also here in Guam itself. It means so much to our team here in Guam. It means a lot to us in the Mats and Management team because what it says is we're here to stay. It's a real physical manifestation of our commitment to this region. It's so important that we hire locally, we develop talent locally, we train locally. What's been a wonderful addition to our approach there is that many of the people who started off in Guam have gone off into significant leadership roles elsewhere in the company. This is our headquarters here in Guam in Micronesia. And when we talk about putting down our roots, it's not just doing business, it's about everything we do with our friends, our customers, and our employees. I believe that nobody can replicate what we do, and that's why we have such a great team and such a great service and why we're successful. This is our home, this is our life, and we're happy to make a difference in everyone else's life. In this divided world, there are still things that unite us. Great music, thrilling games, and the love for that perfect burger. Ruby Tuesday Guam, for the love of burgers menu. For a limited time, get an amazing burger for just $11.99. Lunchtime at Ruby Tuesday Guam. KUAM Sports is presented by Triple J. What's up, Guam? Dave Delgado here for KUAM Sports. Thanks for watching. I'll get you some youth wrestling news in just a bit, along with some info on this weekend's Kids Fishing Derby. But first off, some basketball highlights from the Guam Elite Center in Teeson. Check it out. Guam Elite Basketball Summer Showcase at the Elite Center in Teeson. Elite White taking on Elite Gold in the U16 division. Elite Gold holding on to a double-digit lead in the second half. Elite White... Trying to pound the ball inside. Davin Rojas with good defensive pressure to rush the shot. Gavin Stinnett picks up the ball and attacks the basket. Pull-up jumper. Baseline goes off the backboard for two points. 
Gold coming up with another steal off the inbound. Jeremiah David takes it all the way in for the finish. David with 17 points in the game. Kyle Dillion splits the defense here. Not sure if it was a pass or shot. Ball gets kicked out to Stinnett, who pulls up for the three-pointer in the corner. Stinnett with a team-high 11 points. Big man Tomas Demapon going to the rack, gets blocked on the first attempt, but gets the ball back and puts it in for two of his six points. Davin Rojas led all scores with 22 points to help Elite Gold pull off the win, 66-36. Rojas with the assist to Jay Paralea for the last score in his team's win. The 27th Annual Kids Fishing Derby takes place this weekend at the Warren the Pacific National Historic Park in Assen. The Derby is this Saturday, but in order to participate, kids need to be registered by July 11th. The Derby is open to kids ages 7 to 12 years old and limits it to 75 participants. To register, head on down to the Department of Aquatics and Wildlife Resources office in Mingilao from 8 in the morning to 5 p.m. And make sure to bring an ID and proof of age for each participant. For more info, call 735-0281 or 0294. In wrestling news, the Snake Pit Wrestling Academy Summer Clinic wrapped up with a friendly in-house wrestling competition. The camp lasted five weeks and had over 40 kids ages five and up learn the basic fundamentals of the sport. They worked on their fitness, and learn wrestling techniques. At the end of the five-week camp, the kids attending the summer clinic were able to showcase their skills that they learned in front of their parents, friends, and family members in the one-day tournament. Congratulations to all the students and coaches on an active summer break. All right, anything sports, hit me up, sho at kuam.com. That's going to do it for sports. We're back right after this. Where can you find a burger inspired by flavors from near and far that mixes the smoky with the sass of the South? Combines the sweetness of summer with the tang of the country for savory, sizzling, unexpected flavors. 